Haven't seen you since uh, April. Yeah, Let's go back a little bit, man. I mean, uh, I know that was a fight you were looking forward to, yeah. and uh, things didn't go your way. Right. Talk about just the emotion that you took out of that, just kind of lessons you took out of that fight. Um, the biggest thing I took from the Gary Rodriguez fight um, is that, I mean, obviously he's good, and, and but I feel, I feel like the fight was pretty close, and every time I threw my hands, I... I was having success. I think the biggest thing I took from that was not to overanalyze. Uh, going in the year fight, he, he throws a lot of crazy stuff. And so it was like all this time of just like, prepare for this, get ready for this, uh, watch for this thing and counter this. And instead of just fighting, instead of going in there and beating someone up, you know, it's, it's easy to make this thing more complicated than it really is. You know, when I got into the sport, I was 14 or 15 and I started fighting because I like to fight, you know? And I had success early on because I just wanted to beat people up. That that was it was easy, you know. And then when the stakes get higher, you start adding all these things. Like, it, you start adding all these things. Like, yeah, you got physical therapy, and you have this, and you got to make sure you diet this way. And it's easy to get lost in the sport of things instead of just realizing that, like, no matter what else happens, like you, your job is to beat someone else up. So I've really got back to just tra trusting my training and and. Um, going off my instinct and, and just enjoying just the fight and not overanalyzing things. That's, that's awesome. It makes a lot of sense. I think you can see sometimes when people just are overanalyzing right. their head, not pulling yeah. the trigger. So how do you, I mean, how do you focus on that in training every day? How do you, how do you improve that? You just have fun. My sparring rounds have been fun, you know? I took the fight on three weeks notice, but since April, I've been, I mean, even before I was cleared to spar, I was drilling jiu-jitsu and stuff. I was right back in the gym after the air fight. I've been in the gym since the air fight. So taking this fight on three weeks notice doesn't bother me because I've been putting in the rounds and I've been having fun. Like there's no pressure. It's like I knew after the loss, especially with how many 45ers there are, the UFC is not exactly like concerned about getting me right back into a fight. I knew it was going to be some time. And so I just enjoyed. I had like six months of training where I ate whatever I wanted and I got to enjoy my life. But I had fun, like it was fun to go spar. You know, I go in on Wednesdays, Wednesday mornings and have fun. I don't have an opponent to get ready for. I don't have, I just go in, I help my friends for their fights and punch, get punched a little bit and, and have fun. And that's what it's supposed to, that's how it's supposed to be, you know? No doubt, you mentioned taking this fight on short notice. Uh, I mean, a tough opponent to step in on, on short yeah. notice, right? So talk to me about how that happened. I mean, did you get the call? Did you, did you bid for it? I mean, how did this come together and why was this a good fight for you? It came down, uh, it was weird how it happened. I saw um, a fan tweet me, like they tagged me. Some, somebody said, uh, Brian Ortega out, Hakron Diaz needs a fight. And a random fan tagged me and said, um, oh, this would be good for Touchy Feely. And I saw it on, online and I didn't retweet or do, do, didn't do anything. I just texted Sean Shelby right away. I was like, dude, I want the Hakron fight. Like, fight will be a banger. Like, throw me in, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I've been, I've been training my weight. I, I just told him, put me in, like I'm good. And, uh, he said, all right, uh, tell your management to call me. So I called him, my management, and they got on it. And, uh, and that's how it got inked the, that day. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not in this sport to, like, I don't know how to say this uh, appropriate. I'm not in this sport to, uh, <laughs> I'm not in this sport to, to take easy fights. I'm not in this sport to be a pussy about it. Like, I, I'm here to fight the best guys in the world. Like, why else would you be in the UFC if you're not here to, fight the best guys in the world and make the most money and make the biggest noise and um, I'm not one of those dudes that's obsessed with being like I have to be a world champion obviously that's a goal but I want to make money I want to put on I want to put on fights that people remember and I want a number next to my name you know I want to be able to bid for a better contract I want all these things that come with beating ranked guys like I'm not here to fight some dude that no one knows and oh, I mean I think this is definitely a guy that people know and he's right. ranked but when you talk about putting on exciting fights is he the right guy for that? Because, you know, when Hawken beats, I mean, sometimes it's, it's just yeah. a grinding kind of right. boring fight. Right, yeah. I've seen him in, in fights. Uh, if you let him clamp on you, he's going to drag you down and he's going to make you probably pretty miserable and he's going to grind to a decision. But look at the Cub fight. I mean, if you can stop his shot and you hit him a couple times, like, he's not – like, Hawken's tough. Like, he'll stand and trade with you. You know, he's, he's from Nova and, yeah, they're, they're a tough camp. Like, those dudes aren't punks. Like – if you sock him, he's going to plant his feet and try to sock you back, and that's what I'm looking to do, you know? I'm looking to punch him right in his face and, and see what he has back, you know? And I just feel good. Like, I'm just ready for, to – I'm ready for a fight, like, honestly. I don't, I don't think he's going to uh, – I think he'll probably shoot early. I think once I stop a few of his shots, uh, that'll stop, and he'll go back to trying to chop my leg, legs down. 
And once you stop that with a few checks, it will turn into a, a, a fist fight. And that's that, awesome. That's what I'm looking forward to. You talked about your training. Give me the, give me the feel. What's, what's, the, what's the mood like around Team Alpha Male right now? It seems like kind of just such a, it's been like a transitionary period, you know, a transitionary yeah. year. You're getting your, your, your guys that were fighters and now coaches, you know, Uriah is kind of right. dwindling down. I mean, he right. said that he's kind of thinking about it. What's, right. what's the mood like around that? What's the feel? Dude, the energy's crazy. Like, I, it's probably the best, the best the gym's ever been. I mean, we have it's. It was been a transitionary period, but now we're all, we're all pretty locked in. We all kind of have our roles, and and uh, it's it's been great, man. I mean, yeah, Buckles is killing it as a head coach. Castillo is the wrestling coach. Holdsworth is the jiu-jitsu coach, and everything has just been, just been fitting well. And uh, you know, we've always been like this big dysfunctional family that we all love the shit out of each other but it's been this big like dysfunctional family like sitcom dynamic and everyone has their roles and everyone's roles have kind of changed but they still fit like it's just been perfect man i, I really love it i love having those guys in my corner and uh, cody and Paige have both just been killing it so i'm excited to step up like i think the the whole cast of like the young alpha male guys carrying the team I think I'm part of that, but I've sort of been inconsistent, and so I want to get in there and carry my weight. You know what I mean? I think it's, I think it's, you know, Cody Page, Holdsworth, and myself. I think it's sort of our job right now. We have a couple other guys that are going to be in the UFC soon. Uh, we just got Alex Sandoval. We just got Josh Emmett. It's sort of our job to carry the, the legacy on, you know. And so I want to do my part. I think I've been inconsistent. Uh, even I mean, even when I've lost, I mean, if you look at my losses, like it's flying triangle, like. <laughs> switch kick like even my I mean dude, even my losses like I put on exciting fights but I want to start getting those wins consistently like I did uh you know pre-UFC and then I'm excited to go in and, and do that on a big stage you know against a good opponent